Hi guys, we're back. Uh, this is Nancy Lynn from So Euphoria and um, we're back doing our little postcards and I just wanted to show you some of these that I've gotten made. Um, this one's a little Christmas tree and like I said I just started out sewing the two pieces of fabric and then I cut out a little tree and put it on there. This one is the little flowers in the mason jar and I just kind of strip pieced and we'll do one of those today like that. This one I got some of the and I hope you guys can see these. This one says fins up for the dolphins because we're dolphins fans and this was I just kind of drew up the fins up and there it goes. This one is like a little crazy quilt got some lace and all kinds of stitching on it and stuff like that. I'll take some pictures of these afterwards. Um, this one is like a little mountain scene. Uh, this one has just got a sunflower on it. And then some crazy fabric. So like I said, that's what I'm saying. We'll start out with some basic pieces and we'll put on there and you just build from that point this one's got the little bird on the sunflower and the little sunshine in there um, and this one is like a happy birthday one and I just wrote in my own handwriting happy birthday and made a cupcake with a little heart on top of it but the first thing I started was with that um, muslin you can use a sheet you can use an old shirt whatever but you just want some piece of fabric for that base so then you can start building onto that in the foundation and by doing that you will little by little pick up your sewing skills um i think this is you know you could it could be as simple as if i can get the light to get back in here again Yeah, this light is not going to work. This is a couple of pieces of fabric around a partridge and pear family. And then there's some more blue and white. Probably what I think about putting those together. Maybe not, but tried it on the cards. Um, I have some more over here that I've kind of sewn basically together. Now on this one, this is going to be the finished and yeah this light is not gonna work let's see if I can get any kind of light on here see this one's a palm tree and it's got the Sun in the background I think maybe right there we can get some light and then this one is the beginning of it and with this one I used a whole piece of fabric there was a lot going on with the fabric and so now I'm doing and this is kind of like a stretch fleece material so you can use just about anything I found some pieces that I've done that I thought might go on some of these some crazy owls here's a piece that we just did that I sewed together some blue fabric and some white fabric Here's another couple of pieces of fabric, the turquoise. This one I liked that it had a lot of wording on it. I just used one sheet of fabric on there. This one's a little more towards completion. It's got some start shooting stars on there. I don't know where else I'm going to do. But this one I was working on a blue and white quilt and this is from the blue and white quilt. This one I just sewed it in strips. There are strips of fabric here. This one, I think this was a purse. And this was some of the remnants. And so I've just started doing some stitching on there. This one I just did kind of what we call in quilting a flying geese. This is the one we started the other day. Here's one we started the other day. Here's another one we started the other day. Like I said, all these are as backgrounds, and then but later on we'll go. This one is just all polka dots. And this one I used for a mask. I made 
bags out of this. I mean, backings out of this. This was a lot of this. A friend of mine, Julianne. Juliet gave me that. Julianne. This one has got more of a vintage feeling. It's got like little barns and little wagons. This one I've just gotten to this and it's just... All I'm doing is sewing little pieces of fabric together. And like I said, it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. This one's kind of midway. This one's got some grapes and some purple material. And so that's where we're going to go from here with this is we're going to start putting them together and start figuring out maybe what you want to put on them. But then you once you have a few minutes to sit down and do this you've already got your blanks made so then part of the work is done already so now all you've got to do like on this one it needs to be trimmed up and somewhere i have scissors and if you want to do sewing the one must is a good pair of scissors and these are kind of I keep these by this machine and this is they're kind of mediocre scissors but they cut so and then you're just going to cut around and all I'm doing is following that rectangle that I started with that was four and a half by six and a half and like I said it doesn't have to be muslin if you've got old shirts old sheets any of that it's not going to be seen because everything else is covering over it. See, that one's going to be pretty. I could see maybe some birds on that one. And this one, maybe I could make a bottle of wine and put on that. That would be kind of sweet. So you just have to start coming up with some different ideas. Now, luckily, I do have a die cutter. That helps out a lot with the die cutter. Um, so that you can very easily makes more of these things. Now this was a stamp and I stamped onto fabric and then I just lightly kind of used uh, I'm trying to think what I used to do this. I think it was some ink that I used to go over it so that it has more color and this one I may just cut around it in fact we can do that make it a little bit smaller and I'm not cutting perfectly all I'm doing is I want a little bit of that background behind it but I just want it to be smaller so it'll fit Would I throw that away? No, because it might have other possibilities. And let's see, this might be... Okay, so that's it's a little too busy, I think, for that. So let's see what else I've got. Got this. Too busy. This one's a little quieter. No. And I, I'll just sit here and play with them and see... Now that looks kind of pretty on that blue and white. And then I could take maybe this is a piece of you know the upholstery samples. And I could set this on here. Somewhere I've got some pink and cheer, but I don't see them, but we're okay. Nope, this one is not going to let me tear. There's some fabrics that won't let you tear, and I think this is a silk piece. And so see, with this, I'm oh, sorry, I didn't realize I was out of frame, guys. Um, with this here, now I've almost covered almost all of my background and so but I noticed that this still needs to come up further so this might not be my right piece 
it's all trial and error. Now let's see. Hmm, this has got nice stripes. And it looks kind of cool over the black and white. I'm still not crazy over. And we're going to find the right one. Could I use paper behind there? Yes. Alright, I'm going to set this one aside until I run over the right thing to put behind that. Right, here I've got a little piece of a sun. You maybe could cut it off a shirt if you had something on a shirt. Start cutting these little things out that you've got around because those little things could be a little patch. Maybe you didn't know what you were going to do with. No, that one. And that's why I like to have lots of these out because I can keep trying them to. Now this one's got the stars. And so maybe I might want to do the sun with the stars. And I'll put some people behind that. Remember that little piece that we just had? Maybe. Maybe I can put a little piece of this around it. And this is kind of a real sheer fabric. I don't, upholstery fabrics don't like to. Let's see, and then I could. I hope I'm in frame. I hope I'm not filming this, and the whole thing is. I'm just going to pull some of these out so I get some fray around it. got to watch because my piece is here. On this back one I used a piece of Pellon on it and this size is a little bit bigger so I'm either going to have to lose part of this here and make it a little smaller. So I think I am going to do that. So I'm going to move this down a little. And even if this went off I'd be okay with that but I don't think I have to lose it. There we go. Bring our machine in. Once again, I have my walking foot on there. And it looks like I'm threaded. And I still have that same purple thread in there. We haven't changed anything in here. Now, I like to use the presser foot. Some people don't like to use their foot but I do and all I'm gonna do and you'll see I'm gonna put my finger right in the center and when I want to make a circle if I keep my finger in that center you notice how this is pivoting around my finger I hope you're seeing this oh, this is just not Got my finger. I'm trying to see if you guys can see. There's my finger. And you'll see it just turn around. And then we're finished back up. And I'm going to go forward and back to do a locking stitch. And then I'm going to lift up here. And so now we've got this and we can just 
and this might fray all the way up and won't fray up to that line but it's going to stop eventually because it's not going to be in that much motion but I love the frayedness of it and then when I come through and I'll even this up you can kind of guesstimate it exactly straight no okay so we have that and I'm gonna trim it up on this side and then I'm gonna trim it up on this side and I can go right along with this see and this is gonna be a smaller one just going to go all the way around the outside just once for my fabric to make sure and I'm trying to make sure you guys can see judging this or doing see this is still open on the side so I want to open it here and I'm on my second line this is a postcard it's kind of an art piece so the more stuff that's put into it the more energy that's into it lift up pull out cut it off okay so now what I can do is now I have this Pellon back here so now my postcard and what I'm going to do is line this up with the way I want to see it now what you can do, and I just have some little clips, you could pin it if you wanted to, but I'm just going to put one around because I don't want it to shift a lot. I could put glue on the back of this, but what I do want to do, see how this has got the lines? I do not want that. I want a blank area so that I can put like postcard on the back of there. And I'm going to trim this. And I'm going to trim this. Alright, and now we're going to go around it real quick one time. I'm going to go around it and I'll be right back. Or if you guys want to watch the stitching... I don't know how loud it is. I'm gonna now what I'm doing is I'm going around and I'm attaching that postcard. My needle down so I can spin it. And do you see how I did that? I just with I lifted this up, my pressure foot, turn this down, and I started down this way. When I come up to a corner, I kind of slow down just a little bit to make sure I'm on the fabric, spin it, turn it, and come in. Once again, come up slow to the corner, and come back. And we're gonna come up a little bit stitch and we're done we're gonna clip our so now what you've got on the back of the postcard is some stitching all the way around but I don't like these edges and so in order to get these nice smooth edges that I have around here 
what I'm going to do is change my stitch. I haven't used this machine in a while, so I'm hoping this is a zigzag stitch. But just to make sure, I'm going to check it. And make sure it's a zigzag stitch. some other stitch and it's a great big zigzag stitch so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lessen my stitch length and width so that I can just go around the edges and I'm going to put this there and I'm going to put the edge of my card and actually I'm going to trim this back because I don't want to see all that white rest of it I want it so I don't have all that whiteness around it I'm gonna put it in there line up because my stitch is gonna go this side to this side with your zigzag stitch it's gonna go to this side and that side and so if you want to this switch right here this one is your speed so I can make it so when I push on my pedal that it goes at real slow speed um, see how much slower my machine and I've got it almost full pedal and I'm gonna adjust this up just a little bit There we go. And it's just going to go around the edge. And it's going to hold all those pieces together, but it's just going to give you a nicer finish. And if you've got still a little space in it and you don't like it, you can go around the second one. This is a great one for teaching your eye to be looking at the middle where your needle is going to be and get also practicing your zigzag stitch and then if you wanted to when you get up to the corner go slow you want to stop it so that you're in the material turn and I'm going to keep coming around And I'm going slower because this is a lot of stuff we're going through. And I'm going to pull this out. And I'm hoping you guys can see that we've done a little zigzag stitch all around the edges. And so now once I trim it up, it'll be nice and neat. And so you won't have all these raw edges showing. Okay? And so when you finish this going all the way around, then you'll have another one that you're done with. And then I've got one like this one. This one is the one with the palm tree. I think I'm probably going to cut some little pieces of fabric and make some coconuts and some other things to put on there. Still really want to find something for this one but it's just not coming through yet but it will this one's got a kitty on it and so there it there's a kitty so say hmm I just want to put just the kitty on it I'll just come in line it up here and all I'm gonna do is sew a little ed edge around here one thing I want to do is I'm going to go back to my zero stitch, my one, and I do want to move this up a little bit and over a little bit. And the reason why is because you've seen how much I might have had to trim my other one, so I want to make sure I don't cut off any of my kitty. I don't want them in the middle, but I just want them off to the side. And I'm 
just looking to stay right at the edge but near my material now this one the all the edges are frayed because I tore the edges of them on I'm gonna turn my corner get my backup stitch just to lock it in and so on this one now we've got the little kitty in the window and I don't know what else I'm gonna put on here yet um, I might find another kitty I might find something but I've got that part and I will just keep rifling through these if I just sit here one day and I just don't know what I really want to work on I can come in here and work on these things I have a bunch of like I said I do have die cuts um, and let's see like these are some leaves that I have they're big old leaves These would show up better on here. And now this technique is called like an applique technique. And you take things that you cut out to put on here. And those show up pretty good. I don't know that I really like them on there, but you can keep trying them. And I might put some words on here like leave me alone <laughs> or something you could put on here just a little funny saying or something make it something quirky something kind of because if you're gonna give one of these to your friend I sometimes put them in my um, junk journals actually my cousins just got their junk journals and they had their um but if I decided I did want to do this and this doesn't have any backing it doesn't have any type of a stabilizer behind it which is a good idea if you're using cutouts and I think I'm gonna turn this a little bit more so I don't lose as much I promise guys I will work on better lighting than is the next thing on my list for this table And once I get it down to where I feel like I want it, all I'm going to do is put down my presser foot and just start sewing around. Just a basic stitch. And I'm, all I'm doing is kind of, and when I get down to here, I'm going to push my needle down, turn, and now I'm going to come back the other way. Now I've got this little stem and I'm just going to follow, keep the stem right in the center and I may hit or miss it, but nobody but me is going to realize that I did not mean to do that. And just follow the green and then you can go back the other way, needle down. And I could follow it all the way back, or I could just do my little back stitch and end it here, lift it up, and cut it. And so now I have one of those leaves sewed down on there. Now, could I go through and do more sewing? Yes, I can do whatever I want to. You can do whatever you want to. This is your little thing I can come around with this one back stitch a little just to hold it in if you th I don't know where it ended up but like we lost it somewhere so even though this is a Christmas scene and it's got all these purples and golds and blues which 
I mean greens which kind of to me is Mardi Gras colors but it still is something a little sweet I mean it's different it's something that nobody else is gonna have that's for sure um, but if I had had some material already cut up and put on there that was red and green then I might have used that or um, white and then I can always if I feel like later I can go back and embellish this with you know using a um, magic marker going around the edges of it I can add whatever I want to if I wanted to put like a big star like we've got the little stars here and maybe the bigger star up here and it's just uh, use your imagination and you can do whatever with them I've always thought that I would love to just make a bunch of these and just make a quilt out of all these little pieces or just an art piece with a bunch of different ones you could do one for every month of the year and for the different holidays and just hang it up and don't have to worry about it just hang it up one time so all right this is Nancy Lynn and I'm gonna look over this and hopefully the lighting was enough that you guys could see what's going on here today um, and we'll see you next time thank you bye bye